Hello, uh, my name's Alex and uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to chop a break beat and I'm going to use the Amen break or at least one that's been processed already and I'm going to be taking that from Rhythm Labs Ultimate Amen Break Pack which is a really good sample of free Amen breaks I'll link to in the description. I'm going to show you my favourite method for chopping breaks which is to use a drum rack and the slice to MIDI feature in Ableton. I'm going to create a new slicing preset for that so that we've got set, something set up for when we want to do this with other breaks. So first of all I'm going to choose the sample to work with and so I had a look through the Amen pack, the really excellent Ultimate Amen Breaks pack by Rhythm Lab and I just uh, struck on this one by Fano who's a brilliant producer and has his own YouTube channel. Tis of the Killer Amen 1. Nice, so it's not the full break, it's been um, recorded, processed already, and it sounds like it's got repetition of the same hits in it anyway, but it's a good place to start because it's short, and it's what, what, like, however long that is, let's have a look, yeah, one bar, one bar long, which is great, so we can um, just deal with the one bar, and if you're new to doing all this stuff, that's a good place to start, so... Essentially, when we're doing this, we're taking a long piece of audio that's quite transient rich, so it's got lots of hits in it. You can see here these kind of waveform triangle shapes, and we're slicing them up and we're resequencing them, like we're turning them into a, a drum machine in their own right. So I pulled the Amen in here, and I'd go right click, slice the new MIDI track and this brings up the options to slice the break and if, if you're interested in slicing breaks you might have already encountered this uh, but we're going to go one step further and we're going to um, create our own new slicing preset and I've, I've already done one for YouTube already but I'll recreate it again so I've loaded up a plain drum rack by pulling in drum rack into here and I'm then going to get a simpler, I'm going to drag that on to C1. I'm going to tweak a few things here and map some things. So I'm going to map volume to macro eight, release seven, sustain six, decay five. I'm going to map the pitch or transpose, which is under controls to four. I'm going to turn off LFO, I'm going to turn off filter. I'm going to set the voices to one, as if it were monophonic. I'm going to turn off loop, turn off snap, leave it in classic mode. I'm just going to retitle these, because I like to name them in my own custom way. Something a bit more clean, easy to look at. And you can colour code them and do all kinds of things if you want. Do stuff like that, make it look really nice. Add some colours in, etc whatever so and here I'm going to just save it I save all my samples or racks that I create with an AW prefix and this makes it really easy to search afterwards so AW drum rack slicing preset YouTube 2 all right, so we've got that there. I'm gonna to go to user library. I'm gonna go into defaults. I'm gonna go into slicing, and I'm simply gonna drag this up here. And I'm just gonna hit return. And there we go, it saved my new slicing preset into the slicing defaults. Minimize that. So we got, we can delete that now. We go back to our break here. And I'm going to right click that, slice the new MIDI track. We're going to slice by transient. This is a good point to mention that there are many ways, many, many ways to skin the uh, proverbial breakbeat cat. Uh, here we're going to deal with each hit of the break. You can also make your own drum racks where you're dealing with longer portions or put them in a sampler or whatever. Uh, I think I'll deal with that in a separate video because it's it's got a whole different sound to it. Uh, I have included in that little jam at the beginning 
some examples of that in this rack here where there are longer um, pieces of the breakbeat. Let's just see if I'm... Like that. Uh, but we're going to be dealing with hit by hit. I'm just going to do that for, for this video and then other ones we can explore different ways of processing them or resequencing them. So we've got our, our break here. Uh, I'm going to right click, slice the new MIDI track and I'm going to go to the preset we just created, YouTube 2. I'm going to turn off preserving warp timing. I'm going to OK that. Live's going to do its thing and it's going to slice it to a new channel uh, and the drum rack we created. So I'm just going to give that a listen, check it's uh, done its job properly. Quantize it, turn up the velocities, legato out the notes. Sounds pretty good to me. I'm just going to quickly rename these. And I like to do that so that it's clear once I save it and maybe pull it into another session what the hits are. And when I'm programming, I can just see what they are. So kick, hat, oops. Go snare. Okay, so I've renamed those. I'm gonna call this clip Master, because that's our master clip. I'm gonna retitle this AW Amen Tears of a Killer Break Rack YouTube. Okay, cool. And now I'm gonna copy that, get rid of the master. I'm gonna start making some of my own clips. Duplicate that. Jig of stuff. that one. I'm going to take the master again and just show you another way I like to do it which is to pull it onto the timeline. Oops, not there. And to start chopping it by eye, so Mm -hmm. 
So you can hear those last end hits just sound like it's a repetition of the first three. Yes, nice. Gonna command J that. Rename, no master. Right click, sorry, double click to go into the clip. Loop, change the color. Why not? So I like to mac, um, map these macro controls for so that we can have kind of control over the over sculpting the sound. And the good thing about doing it transient by transient or hit by hit is that you can get cool effects like this. Okay, and once you've programmed a few clips, you can do cool things like turn legato mode on and start generating some really interesting patterns. Very nice, okay. So from here, you can start to manipulate the clips or manipulate the hits in different ways, which I've done in the example that I played at the beginning. I'm just gonna turn off the delays here and make sure that I stop playing. So, so I've got these reverse time stretch uh, clips. And what I'll do is I'll package this all up and I'll put it down in the description so that you can uh, download the set with this um, drum rack in with the more processed bits and the MIDI patterns. And then I'd say head over to Rhythm Lab and get the samples yourself and mess about with the other breaks there. So now I'm gonna uh, save the set, package it all up and I'll put a download link for it in the description so that you've got this, uh, this rack with all the time stretch bits and stuff and you can start programming your own patterns with it. Yeah, there we go. Have fun, experiment, and find your own way that you like to chop breaks, be it with drum racks or, or in a different style. Once you've done this, you can then record jams of it, record longer sections, bounce it to audio and manipulate it even further. The only limit is your imagination. So I've been Alex, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you around.